wishing you all a happy and blessed day. Marlena Manzanilla Fajardo is again on your way. The adjacent stages of cognitive development, the sensory motor and pre-operational stage is our lesson for today. Sensory motor is the first stage of Jan Piaget's cognitive development. This stage starts from birth, so infancy, up to two year old. And this stage, a child is initially automatic in grasping, sucking, and reaching becomes more organized in his movement and activity. The term sensory motor focuses on the prominence or importance of the senses and muscle movement through which the infant comes to learn about himself and the world. Working with children with sensory motor stage, teachers should aim to provide a rich and a stimulating environment with appropriate objects to play with. Do not let them stay in the four corners of the room. Let them go around inside and outside of the house because this will help them to gain schema to everything surrounds them. At this stage, they learn from their senses and movements of their muscles. Now, what are inappropriate objects at this stage? Are these inappropriate? Definitely, yes. Because they are so small and under sensory motor stage, children are prone to choke, resulting to accident or worse, death. Small toys are choking hazards. Furthermore, sanitize the playing area as well as everything they usually hold because at this stage, they love putting everything inside their mouth. So, everything surrounds them should be hazard-free or walang hazard. Caregivers, guardians, or parents at this moment should not keep their eyes away from their children under this age. In sensory motor stage, object permanence is obtained. And what do we mean by it? Object permanence means it is the ability of the child to know that an object is still exists even when out of sight. I'll give an example for that. If the child cries, <laughs> when the mother steps out of the room, responding to their concern or worry can help them realize that the mother have not disappeared. And that she will come back when the child needs her. Children usually begin to grasp this concept around the age of 8 months, according to John Piaget's theory. However, this may occur as early as 6 months for some babies. But don't stress if your little one is not early or exactly on time. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong. At sensory motor stage, a child can remember and repeat words or actions. Imaginative play typically begins during this period, and child's vocabulary will develop significantly. They might ask short questions and make requests with one or two words. How about the stage two of cognitive development? We call it pre-operational stage. This stage covers from about 2 to 7 year old, roughly corresponding to the preschool years. Intelligence at this stage is intuitive in nature. The child can now make mental representations and is able to pretend. The child is now ever closer to the use of symbols, meaning... Children are thinking at a symbolic level but are not yet using cognitive operations. Child thinking during this stage is pre-operational, meaning before operations. This means the child at this stage cannot use yet the logic or transform 
or combine or separate ideas. Guys, in this stage, we have the what we call as pre-operational thought. First of those is symbolic function. Then what is this? It is the inability to represent objects and events. A symbol is a thing that represents something else. A drawing, written word, or a spoken word comes to be understood as representing a real object. Symbolic function gradually develops in the period between 2 to 7 years old. Gradually develops means unti-unting na de-develop. At this stage, this is how important using real objects in teaching. This concept tells us that teaching under this stage takes time and multi-sensory. Furthermore, in symbolic function, they engage in pretend play. This is a five-year-old boy, who is my son, who is pretending and imagining that he is a ninja fighting to his opponent. At this moment of kids' life, they can pretend play with objects that exist only in their mind. Therefore, if you expose the child to fighting scenes or games, then this is what will exist in their mind, and this is what they imitate during pretend play. This theory is a good precaution to all caretakers, guardians, or parents to be watchful to the environment of their kid. Okay, another pre-operational thought in this stage is the egocentrism. At this moment of children's life, they cannot take the perspective of the others. The child cannot understand the other's point of view. Example, upon seeing the child's sister crying, a young child gives her his favorite staff toy to make her feel better. This shows that at this stage, the child locks of logical reasoning. I remember the days when I was teaching grade 1 kids. Most of them loved to be always the first in line. This is one of the reasons why they sometimes pushing its other in line. This is very normal to them because they are under egocentrism period. In this case, proper guidance of adults is very much important. Then what about centration? Centration is referring to the tendency of the child to only focus on one aspect of a thing or event and exclude other aspects. I'll give you an example. When the child is presented with two identical glasses with the same amount of water, the child will say, they have the same amount of water. However, once water from one of the glasses is transferred to an obviously taller but, but narrower glass, the child might say that there is more water in the taller glass. This means that the child is only focused or centered to only one aspect of the new glass, and that is a taller glass. The child was not able to realize that the new glass is also narrower. The child only centered on the height of the glass and excluded the weed in determining the amount of water in glass. Class, that's what we call centration. Then what about irreversibility? Irreversibility tells that operational children still have the inability to reverse thinking. Kaya minsan ang sabi nila ang bata daw ay hindi marunong magsinungaling because at this stage, a person is unable to mentally reverse a sequence of events. In this stage, this is a stage where your child cannot imagine that a sequence of events can be reversed to their starting point. They can understand that 5 plus 2 equals 7 but cannot understand that 7 minus 2 equals 5. That is the concept of irreversibility. Then what about animism? This is the belief that inanimate objects 
What are the examples of inanimate objects? Maybe toys, teddy bears, stones, anymore. At this stage, children believe that these inanimate objects have human feelings and intentions. By animism, Piaget meant that for the pre-operational child, the world of nature is alive, conscious, and has a purpose. Example is the boy who might say, toys need to stay home because they are tired. Or, toys need to be fixed or else they will run away. Why kids under pre-operational stage say that? Because on the stage, they are on the stage of animism. Another example of animism is that children under this stage might say that the dark clouds are angry. Dark clouds Do are angry. When they tell that. Why? Because again, they are on this normal stage of their cognitive thinking. They are on the stage of believing that all things are living or animated and capable of intentions, consciousness, and feelings. Well, the last but not the least preoperational thought is the transductive reasoning. This refers to the preoperational child's type of reasoning that is neither inductive nor deductive. Reasoning appears to be from particular to particular. Example, since the three-year-old child always goes when asked why it is already morning, the child will say, because my brother is already in school. Well, that's all for this time. For our next video, it's all about concrete operational stage and formal operational stage. See you there. Thank you for watching. Ingat.